Hi there, I'm Juliana Carroll, and this is my sister and partner in Coffee and Tech, Lisa Jackson. Together, we are your hosts here at the Coffee Tech Talk Show, exploring anything and everything to do with work orchestration. And hey, coffee. everyone. Welcome back to a new session of Coffee Tech Talk Show. I'm here with my sister, as always, Jay, Joanna Carroll, and I'm Lee Jackson. And today we have a wonderful guest by the name of Willie Anderson in this lovely Jacksonville, Florida. And we want to introduce you to our guest. So with that said, Willie, how about you tell everyone you know, about yourself, yes. where you're from, what do you do, all that good stuff. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you the abbreviated version. So okay. my name is Willie Anderson. Um, I've been an IT leader for 30 years, 30 years in about four months. Um, I started at the age of 19 oh, wow. uh, at Allstate Insurance Company. It was a way for me to pay for college. Mm -hmm. And so I started leading the off-shift computer operators mm -hmm. at the age of 19. I had like four or five people, and then at some point I got another function, and there was 40 people. And so here I was at 19, about to turn 20, and most of them were women. So I learned a lot about leading, inspiring, and talking to human beings mm. uh, and meeting them at their level. And quite frankly, my entire career has been in different IT leadership roles, mostly on the infrastructure side of the house. Okay. And I've never really held the same position for much longer than three years. So somewhere between years one and three, there's some sort of movement that happens. Okay. So this started in Cleveland, Ohio, then it migrated its way to Chicago, okay. and then made its way to Jacksonville here. So I've lived in those three places. Never boring, huh? Never boring. In the last 90 days, a lot of people have had to pivot. Yes. Right? Especially in the pandemic. Yes. Um, you know, what have you done or did you, and is it sustainable for your business, and is it something that you would put into place, you know, for the Rest of the year. Our business model is interesting for the company that I work at now. They mm -hmm. tend to make money whether the housing market is doing good or bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay? Yeah. They make money on foreclosures. They make money on originations. It yeah. doesn't matter. So it's a very unique little business model. I'm not saying they're unscathed, but they're nowhere near as impacted as other businesses around us. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the things that we had to do, we were kind of prepared for anyway, right? Uh, that I would consider to be quote unquote unsustainable yet, Yeah. right? And there are some hot spots I'm watching <clears throat> where work is hitting certain teams in a certain way. And I think that the organization needs to change to deliver in a nice orchestrated, clean way. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually working on figuring out how to influence that Promoting transparency and impact between each team and between each types of group. Right? Yeah, you know, I guess you guys are pretty lucky because you're in the technology world where honestly the rest of the world is is not as lucky, right? Um, in in yeah. our industry, tourism, food, lodging, events. Sure. Um, I mean, it's we represent about eight hundred eighty-five million dollars worth of business. In yeah. themselves and 6.6 yeah. 6 million jobs yeah. and um, in Las Vegas alone you know it's where it's probably gonna affect 50 percent of our business so a lot of companies have had to pivot yes. and restructure and figure out a way to survive in the last 90 days um, you know their business whatever it may be and then see if it's the same for the next you know six months until the end of the year yeah and it's been tough, you know. I, I spoke to, yeah. you know, a company that they do recycled plastic water bottles, shirts that are recycled plastic water bottles, and they turned it into masks because shirts weren't selling. Right. Right. So there's different things that people have had to do to sustain their business, and with what you guys are doing, um, I guess you guys weren't really affected that much. And you know, from an overall work perspective, mm -hmm. we do different types of work, right? So, for instance. Um, we had to pivot from, we were, we, one of our projects were actually uh, doing orchestration yeah. for AV and conference rooms, right? Yeah. Because there's always tricky when some AV doesn't work and you have 20 people in a conference room, right? So mm -hmm. we literally 
um, put that on pause mm -hmm. and then focus more on, like everybody else did, you know, virtual conferences. Right? Yeah. So we have to put more bandwidth and, mm -hmm. you know, get more people on the mobile platforms and, and, and so on. So did the work change from a modern perspective? Not really. I mean, we changed the people, not really. We just kind of repurposed them yeah. to, um, you know, I'm not quite sure that it's the same as pivoting, but mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, we reacted to the situation. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, the biggest pivot I see from a lot of my peers mm -hmm. that I'm in contact with is they've been forced to focus on just staying stable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So any transformation projects they had going on, any innovation things, they had to curtail that, like shrink it way back. And in many cases, they've had to shrink their staff. And so they're keeping the lights on, keeping things stable, and just managing capacity. Mm -hmm. So I've seen a lot of that. So some of it, from an IT perspective, depends on the business you're enabling and supporting. But that's what I've seen and, and just been keeping contact with a lot of my peers. Yeah. So this brings us to our last question for the session. And this goes to all of us, whoever wants to answer this question. Um, if your boss came to you and said, I have a million dollars for you to spend on an innovation or improvement um, project, what project would you choose, why, and how would you spend that money? Mm. Your turn. What, so, why, and how? <laughs> so I, I have a project in mind that's probably germane to most infrastructure okay. groups, but yeah. you know, I'm, I would go through a process. My leaders, my people, they would all be involved because mm -hmm. we would have this discussion. Because if my boss decided to do that to my group, they would be giving us a gift. And the reason they are giving us that gift is because they trust us, because they've seen what we've done without it. Mm -hmm. And so they basically said, we're gonna give you this budget because we've seen what the hell you've been doing without it. Mm -hmm. Um, that message would get relayed to those people so that they understood what this was all about and that we could appreciate and understand and take it seriously. So now everybody would be in the right headspace, the right spiritual space, etc. Mm -hmm. um, chances are that project would look and smell something like this. Um, I'm watching a lot of um, infrastructure groups mm -hmm. that are struggling with the cloud because the cloud is over here. And we don't need you guys. Application guys, we can just go straight to the cloud. But what we're finding out is that's not 100% true. Mm -hmm. But the guys who are working with their on-prem environments, right, all the storage, all the servers, all the database, it's like they don't necessarily have the time and energy to go and figure that out and sustain it because they're doing this. And chances are their budget shrunk a little bit. So they have just enough people to keep that going, deal with the demand and all that kind of stuff. I would probably spend that money in accordance with my team on figuring out how we bridge those two worlds. Um, if you can build and support on-prem, then you can build and support in the cloud. You're clearly smart enough. You're clearly intelligent enough. There are differences, but the people can do both. And I think not only can the people do both, you will spend less money and you'll become more efficient. And they will figure out how to hybridize that infrastructure where you might have some on-prem pieces and off-prem. Maybe your web and app is in the cloud, but your database is on-prem. Like they will figure that stuff out. Uh, and so that investment would probably go in that direction because I think uh, the people need it. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching the, the rub. And you're basically application people are saying, we don't want to deal with you and your processes and your security and your this and your that. We're going straight here. Not truly understanding that you still can't get around those things. There's still an image. So that standard image that's on prem, so it's got to be in the cloud. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to fail an audit. That, I mean, there's just certain rules and things that have to be in place. So I probably spend that money on that because I think that would be exciting. I think it would be not just transformative, but probably a bit more revolutionary, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think it'd be healthy for the people. I'm real big on what are we doing 
as leaders to make the culture attractive. And part of the attractiveness of your culture is your leadership better be eating, sleeping, and drinking, trying to figure out ways to make your people's resumes better. Mm -hmm. That way they choose to stay with you, yeah. right? And so that's kind of well, maybe an odd thought and not real popular, but that's, that's kind of how I attack it. I actually agree with that. I'm all about the culture. Me being in the sales and marketing, my marketing world, a million dollars, you know, for us, that is, that would be a dream come true, <laughs> you know, to have that kind of a budget. And I would improve, I think, with the training. The training process is big, you know, for sales, and um, they need to go to um, classes. Yeah. You know, there's like different types of sessions and trainings um, three times a year. There's acti activities that um, I think that salespeople would benefit from, you know, team building and things like that. Yes. Um, we haven't done a whole lot of that in our company. And, um, but people stay because of the culture. We're, we're a small business, but we deal with Fortune 500 clients. And, you know, we're a creative company. Yeah. And we understand so much how to work with small budgets and, and turning it into something really big. So I've had to deal with those types of budgets. And, you know, I think the smaller the budget, the creative, the more creative you have to be. No doubt. And um, if I was to have that million dollars, I mean, I, you know, with what I've been doing with the company, I, I mean, I think it would be pretty amazing. I mean, I can't explain everything I wanted to, but it's definitely going to be in the digital strategy. Yeah. I think that's really important, digital marketing strategy. Um, that's where the world is. Yeah. And uh, we need to be able to compete at that level. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's Jay's turn. <laughs> How about you, Jay? Well, we have put it in the context of what we've been talking about workflow orchestration, yeah. right? Um, and in the along of, of what you say, right? Yeah. Why, why do hybrid projects get, you know, it gets in so much trouble all the time, right? Um, like, for instance, moving an application, a business application to the cloud, right? First of all, you need application skill set. Right? Mm -hmm. And application development traditionally is not the same group as the infrastructure people, right? Yep. And then when your, um, your team has been used to physical infrastructure, and then here comes somebody new talking virtual, talking container, you know, um, they're not, there's three teams that need to work together aren't speaking the same language. An application to an infrastructure person is not the same as an application to a business application development person. And neither is it to the cloud because you know some of their middleware containers is you know they're calling it application, right? Mm -hmm. So to your point, um, you know there should be a project, right, that ties these pieces together mm -hmm. and concertedly um, aim at putting the right skill sets together in a pod and then systematically, you know, go after one application and to another because once you do one or two or three, then, you know, the, the infrastructure underneath it is exponentially, mm -hmm. you know, wider and wider, right? So I think what, um, what we've been seeing is the application people are directly moving to their virtual and then they get stuck because yep. stuff like AD, yep. you know, well, yeah. stuff like, you know, basic, basic stuff that they don't consider because, you know, infrastructure people live and breathe it, right? It's as a service. So, yeah, I agree with you. So, you know, there should be um, a systematic acknowledgement of three types of group being put together to systematically move, you know, applications one by one. So, um, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were agreeing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's say that. Um, let's see. Let's say that um, trade shows now, right? 
Trade shows went from buildings. It's being held in buildings, correct? You have to know infrastructure, you have to know, um, you have to know spaces, you have to have so measurement of physical spaces, you actually have to have nails and yeah. how much. Yeah, absolutely. Those okay. are like my server and storage. That's, guys. that's like infrastructure on that physical. So now let's say that the world has moved on and that um, trade shows are now virtual reality. Right? Which mm -hmm. some are right now. But they are coming okay. because of what's right. happening, right? Yeah. So if you were a virtual reality programmer, mm -hmm. right, how would you make it realistic if you never knew the size of a chair in ratio of the size of a table mm -hmm. or the size of the ceiling, mm -hmm. right? So if the programmers in the virtual reality has never ever experienced the physical world, yeah, you might end up the jellyfish like you make a lot of assumptions, like they don't even value those people so, how they yeah. can help. Right. right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they use different words, mm -hmm. right? Um, and to sometimes the same word, like an application, mm -hmm. is used three different ways. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so um, there should be a school, mm -hmm. or there should be a systematic way where uh, a project is now have the physical person mm -hmm. and then the virtual person mm -hmm. and a designer person working together also should have the receiver like a pretend customer not a pretend customer like a customer should be hired to be a real customer to experience whether this virtual reality meets expectation mm -hmm. or they come in there and they're very you know vert what is it when you when vertigo because the designer couldn't quite get the spacing just right, right? So, okay. so um, we did use a, a bunch of text speak, but essentially. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, and so it's there's no reason somebody like your product manager, for instance, that designs, you know, uh, a very cool space that you guys use multi-purpose as a podium, as a storage, as you know, yeah. whatever, and you know, can't learn new skills and then apply that into a virtual reality world. Yes, a brand new skill is needed, but how do you connect them together? Yeah, right. So, yeah, you work with physical people, yeah. facilities people, all of that, mm -hmm. and you have some outside virtual virtual reality programmer who doesn't even value them, mm -hmm. but yet they have to create an experience mm -hmm. that feels like the physical. Yeah. What the fuck do they know about that? If they don't spend time with physical people. Right. Oh no shit. Yeah. Well now you have to sell at a, a virtual conference. Yeah. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't you be trained and then you would leverage everything that you know about the physical world and then learn the virtual world. But to learn something new requires investment. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. So um I think that bridge of mm -hmm. bridging anything mm -hmm. to different teams, new advances, yeah. moving from legacy to new is so hard because there's no funds usually mm -hmm. or acknowledgement that you know a bridge is needed. Yeah. Right? Exactly a funny yeah. analogy because a lot of people enjoy virtual worlds, especially mm -hmm. when they're really physical. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so real. I find that shit to be funny. Mm -hmm. You know, why don't you just spend time in the damn real world <laughs> and you you but it's kind of yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. No, I, you broke it down perfectly. Now I understand what you're saying. <laughs> because, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts, right? And then when we have a new product like that, like we're actually selling virtual mm -hmm. conferences and things like that, you have to be trained in that, or we have vendors that we actually partner with. Yeah, you probably right. do the same thing we do a yeah. new team, mm -hmm. and they're the only ones working on it. Yeah. I mean, we that's kind have, of what we have in companies. They yeah. have these little cloud teams, mm -hmm. but all the infrastructure guys are doing the same shit, and they're like, they're working, you know, yeah. and it's like, wait a minute, this is a problem. And she's right. There's the shit they get stuck on all the time. Mm -hmm. It's an audit issue waiting to happen, and well, that shit just needs to be bridged. I remember, <laughs> I remember, I, I think I was talking about this before, but I'm um, walking down on Wall Street, right? Um, getting a phone call because a cloud project, 
some transformation was happening. Mm -hmm. New team, uh, very, very smart cloud people were given authority and funds to send up cloud on their own. Brand new environment, right? So then the very first thing that I, uh, I had this phone call, I said, we can't install our, at the time, uh, VMware, right? We can't install our, our virtual cloud software. Why can't you install your virtual? Uh, because um, we don't have the rights to. Did you put a change ticket in? We don't have to put a change ticket in. We're authorized to, you know, to to build this thing on our own, right? So unless you're going to build a new island, you're gonna have to get to the gate. You have to have authority mm -hmm. to unload your equipment. You have to have authority, you know, to get your password to install because everything, no matter how cloudy it is, is based on something that is physical, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it, the cloud guys need to understand that they're not an infrastructure and the infrastructure guys should know the world is evolving and it's going down to two less neat in the middle, yeah. especially during transformation. And the funny part is that middle, that bridge is very rarely acknowledged and very rarely purposely budgeted mm -hmm. and funded, right? And have an expected outcome, right? So, makes sense? Makes a lot of sense, right? It's crazy. <laughs> um, I'll be real quick. You guys have your own glossary. You know, as far as terms, so do we actually. You can actually go to Google Trade Show and glossary. Yeah. We have all of our own. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> own and own. And, yeah. and, but there's a lot of things that you're saying that we would say as well as far as you know the terms. It's just they mean different things. Yeah. So I thank you for breaking that down for all of us out here who have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but that was really really good. So. Okay, with that said, we have done our first interview session. I hope you guys took a lot of notes. And if they want to get in touch with you, Willie, you have an email that you'd like to give to people? Oh, I do. Willie J. Anderson II at gmail.com. <laughs> word. W I L L I E J Anderson with an S O N I I at gmail.com. <laughs> Awesome. Or LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn is probably better. Connect with him on LinkedIn, which I requested to connect, and you haven't connected yet, so I expect okay. you to accept that. Um, other than that, um, you know where to get in contact with us. That would be connect at coffeetechtalk.show. And anything else? Accepting your LinkedIn ah, right now. There you go. <laughs> anything else you'd like to say, Jay? Uh, see you next time. <laughs> see you next time, guys. Thank, thank you so you much. And thank you, Lily. Thank you. Thank you.